Midweek 5 is out and I'm here to explain everything new on this update. So let's go! They finally gave us one of the most requested features, which is a new browser. Just kidding, I know that the most requested feature is the MSEC, but I'm going to start this video with the browser. This is a more visual and pretty way to see everything that you have. Here on the squares, you can see the packages. These are the ones that you installed from midweek, samples, presets, and so on. Then you got your own custom collections, the type of element you have, and the locations. You can see that now every bit with device is going to be at the start, and then it's going to start with third-party plugins. What I don't like is that in this same folder, after the instrument, you have all the presets for all your devices. Of course, you can go to file kind and put devices or plugins, but the default is to show everything, instruments and presets. So it will be nice to have another option here for presets. So now let's go to the thing that we all wanted. As I said, one of the most requested features was the addition of a multi-segment envelope generator or MSEC. The idea of the MSEC is being able to draw any linear shape to use it as a modulator that is not being limited by attack hold, decay, sustain, and release. The whole concept of Bitwig 5 seems to be this feature, and it comes in the form of different devices. So to start, let me show you segments, which in my opinion is the MSIG for excellence. So segments is a modulator, so you have to put it right here. When you open it up, it looks like this, and I'm going to modulate the cutoff point so you can see and hear how it works. <laughs> so this curve sets the modulation shape. And this device adds a new feature to Bitwig, which is the ability to edit the shape on this screen, which is really nice because usually in Bitwig, every modulator is really small. So the way you change the shape is by just adding points. With the pencil tool, you can draw any shape you want. And as you can see, you have a grid on the background that you can change with these two numbers, and the snap will make every point stick to these lines. This device has different shapes that will be drawn depending on the resolution of the grid. And if you press Alt, you can change the tension of the lines. So you can go from simple modulations to weird and complex stuff. This device has also other options like modulation amount, and the classic knob to multiply or divide the tempo depending on what you have chosen here. You can also make it polyphonic or monophonic. Now, the great thing is that you can choose this to be a loop, and the loop is going to be this blue segment right here. To change it, you go to this tool and start moving it around. You can also freeze the loop and that will act like a sustain. And finally, you can add some kind of slew limiter that will make everything not so steep. Finally, if you press this folder, you get all the presets, and with this other icon, you can save your own shapes as presets. Now, this is not the only new modulator that we have. We also have something similar that's the curves module. This one is more like an LFO, as you can see for the parameters, but you can also edit the shape as you want. Just that this time, you cannot put it as a one shot, and it's always going to loop the whole shape. <laughs> It has the same timing options and smoothing options as segments, as well you have the amount. But the feature that's only here is that you can change the face. And this is really useful, especially when you decide to put hold as the rate. That means that the point is not going to move. But then you can modulate it by using another modulator on the face. Now let's check the other new modulator that we have, which is the Wavetable LFO. As the name suggests, this is an LFO where you can choose Wavetables as modulators. It has all the parameters of an LFO, and you can change the index, so you start changing the shape. 
This comes with a lot of presets that are made not as an oscillator but as an LFO. You can find them here on LFO and sequences, and they especially added some chaos, Euclidean rhythms, well, a lot of Euclidean rhythms, and so on and so on. And if you don't want those in the middle shapes, you can just turn them off with this button. Now, finally, for the modulators, we have one more, which is the Key Track Plus. Now you can edit the line of the key track as weird as you want, and it goes from C2 all the way up to C8. You can use them for anything you want. Here, for example, I'm modulating the face of the LFO with the velocity. Not only that, I'm making the wavetable go up and down with a slow LFO. The wavetable LFO is modulating the graph point, and the key track is modulating the hysteresis and the resonance. <laughs> Bitwig also added new devices for the polygrid. These devices follow the same idea of being able to draw your shapes. For example, we have the scroll where you can draw any shape you want. As you can see, you also have segments and curves, but the other new one is slopes, which follows a similar logic as curves. So let's modulate the cutoff point with this and take a listen. You can also edit it by clicking and then start making any shape you want. Finally, the final MSEC device is the transfer, also for the grid. This one is another addition to the wave shaper family, it's right here. Now you can draw freely any wave shape that you want. To show you how it works, let me put the sine wave right here on the oscilloscope and also let me connect the transfer. Right now, they look the same, but see what happens if I start adding a point right here and moving it. That's right, the waveform is taking the shape of the transfer. Of course, we are having this result because the sine wave is really simple, but if we make the shapes more complex, the result that we have is not going to be as predictable. The drive knob will feed less or more signal to the wave shaper, and it also has an upper limit. And when I go down with the input gain, this white dot on the middle start moving less because this line represents the amplitude of the signal from minus infinity to zero. So for example, if we go really small and we make a change on the top, you will see that it's not so effective. Just when we reach almost zero, we will start seeing that it's getting curved. Let's use slopes to modulate the drive. Of course, with more complex sounds, you can get really interesting distortions. Now, that's not everything new on Bitweek. We have one more thing to check, and it's a really amazing new feature. We have this project tab right here. If we choose it, we will have the master fader on the spectrum. The idea behind this is that now we can put modulators and remote controls to any parameter on the DAW. To show you that, let me put this LFO and click on the arrow. And as you can see, now almost every parameter can be modulated. The panning, the faders, even the BPM. This is really useful to expand on production production and arrangement. Finally, we have new features for this mix view. For example, with this button, we can add different remote controls as they work here on the devices, which is better for performance because now you can see every remote control of every track that you have. We also have new options for the clip launcher, for quantization, for play mode, for the next action, and so on and so on. And that's everything that Big Whip 5 is offering right now. Now, this is still a beta version, so maybe they will add more stuff, but it's already something that I quite like. But what about you? Do you like the new features? Do you think this is a great update? Or do you think this one is more like a regular update? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and give it a like, and consider becoming a patron or a member, or give YouTube thanks, or even donating to my PayPal, so you can support my content. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.